What are you asking? Tell me about your investigation. Of Record wall was? Yeah, tell me about it. Projection that calls for a narrative. Go ahead. I don't understand what the question is. Well, you got a call at some point, right? I'm right or wrong, either you got a call or you didn't. Did somebody call you on the phone and say, gee whiz, you need to go out and investigate? How did that happen? I was assigned to investigate a child abuse referral that was received by the hotline. How did that happen? An email, a text, a phone call, somebody come and knock on your door? How did that happen? Typically it was a phone call. If I was in the office, it might also have been someone coming up in person. I don't recall whether it was in person. Most likely it was a phone call. Okay, about what time of day? I don't recall the specific time. I believe it was late afternoon, early evening on July 9th of 2015. Okay, what do you recall about uh, being assigned that investigation? Just as you sit here today, what do you recall? I recall responding by going out to Children's Hospital of Orange County to make contact with Mrs. Bruno and with Bruno. And you were able to make contact with Miss Bruno, correct? Yes. Okay. Where was that? At Children's Hospital of Orange County. Okay. Did you speak with her? Yes on more than one occasion that day? No, just the one occasion on that day. Okay. Was that, uh, well, let me ask you this. Who was present there during your conversation with Miss Bruno that day? Mrs. Bruno was present, a public health nurse, who worked for the social service agency, Hang Trin. Uh, Trin, T-R-I-N-H. I believe the first name is Hang, H-A-N-G. And uh, Deputy Schmacher from the Orange County Sheriff's Department, or I'm sorry, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Anyone else? No. Where did this conversation take place? I believe it was in the room where Bruno was placed in the, in the hospital room. Do you remember roughly, and again, I know you're not going to be able to give me an exact time, but do you remember roughly the time of day that it was that you had this conversation with Miss Bruno? I believe it was early evening. I don't recall the exact time, maybe about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. That's just an estimate. Sure, sure. Now, when you got the referral or the assignment, I presume that was assigned to you by your quad S at the time. Am I right about that or no? No, there was. <clears throat> There was always a supervisor who had that responsibility for the day, so it wasn't necessarily my supervisor. Do you remember who it was that assigned you the investigation or assigned you the referral? I don't recall the exact supervisor. I don't believe that it was Nicole Stratman who was my supervisor at the time. Okay, would it have been one of those situations, I, I don't remember what they call them there. I think it's uh, officer of the day maybe? Is that similar? There's just a supervisor assigned for that particular day to field the call or to assign calls fielded by the hotline, right? There was a supervisor who would be assigned 
to assign any immediate responses. What do we call, what do we call that person? The supervisor of the day. Supervisor of the day. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Do you guys use command posts here? I get confused. All these counties refer to them. the people that assign the cases as something different. So you guys don't I've, use command posts? I've never post. heard of that. Okay, that must be now. Riverside. They do something similar. When the hotline, hotline call comes in, it goes to the ER department. There's a supervisor that then assigns the referral for investigation to a particular worker. Is that more or less how it works here in Orange County? Yes. Okay. Okay. What was the first thing you did after you were assigned the referral? Did you talk to somebody? Did you review the CWS CMS database? What, what's the first thing you did? To the best of my recollection, the first thing that I did would be to read the report and read what was being alleged. And that would have been the screener narrative? Correct. Can you keep that out, please? <clears throat> okay, you would have done that at your office? Thank you. To the best of my recollection, yes, I read that before I left the office. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we'll mark as exhibit number one to your deposition. Oops, sorry. And just let me know when you're ready. You can identify the Bates numbers. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Sorry. Bears Bates numbers 760RG003448 through and including 760RG003451. And my first question is do you recognize that exhibit number one? Yes, this appears to be the <clears throat> the screener narrative. Okay, does that uh, appear to be a true and accurate depiction of the screener narrative that you would have reviewed um, on or about July 8, 2015? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you reviewed the screener narrative. And I presume you did that at, at your office still, right? To the best of my recollection, yes, I reviewed the screener narrative at my office. Okay, are there any other documents that you reviewed before heading out there? No. Did you speak with anyone before heading out there, other than your assigning supervisor? No. Okay. All right, so you headed out to Children's Hospital, right? Yes. Okay. About how long did it take you from the time that you were assigned the referral to the time that you actually got to the hospital? About how long did that take? An estimate, maybe 30 minutes. Okay, when you got to the hospital, obviously you parked and you went in, yeah? Yes. Okay. Who's the first person you spoke with when you got there? I called the public health nurse, Han Trin, and requested that she come out and assist me with the investigation. Did you call her before you left your office or was it once you got to the hospital? I don't recall the exact time frame. It was prior to making contact 
with anyone at the hospital, but I don't recall if it was prior to leaving the office or when I arrived. Why did you feel it was important to call the county public health nurse? As part of the agency protocol, if there was an allegation of medical neglect or if there was a significant medical injury, we were to contact a public health nurse and request that he assist us with the investigation. Okay, so that was just as a matter of policy. It wasn't a decision that you made, oh, gee, I want to call the public health nurse. That was something you're required to do by policy and procedure. Correct. All right, can we just take a quick break? i got to take my brace off. We are off the record at 12 p.m. We are back on the record at 12.50 p.m. Okay, so we're at the hospital now. You've made your telephone call to the public health nurse. Do you wait for her to show up, or does she meet you there? She met me at the hospital. Okay, so she was there about the time that you got there. No, I think it took a few minutes for her to respond to the hospital. Okay, so you were, you were waiting in the lobby, or where did you wait for her? Typically, I would wait um, <clears throat> either in the lobby or right outside the hospital. Okay. Can you give me an estimate about how long you were waiting for uh, Ms. Tren? I don't recall the exact time frame. It might have been 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. And when you spoke with Ms. Tren, uh, did you explain to her what the situation was, at least as, it, as disclosed in the screener narrative? Yes. Okay. Did she, if you know, did she also have a copy of the screener narrative? I don't know if she had a copy of it prior to meeting me. Mm -hmm. uh, once she met me at the hospital, I believe I showed it to her or confirmed that she had a separate copy. Okay. Do you know whether or not she had any other documents with her? I don't know if she had other documents. Okay, okay what's the next thing that uh, once Ms. Trenchy shows up, you meet her either in the front of the building or in the lobby, right, so far? Mm-hmm, correct. Okay, what happens from there? We went up to the, to the hospital and spoke with Dr. Wong, Daphne Wong. Was that in her office? No, I believe it was on the floor where it was being treated. Okay. <clears throat> How long did that conversation take? The one with Dr. Wong? I don't recall the exact amount of time. I believe it was Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Was there, who was present besides you, the public health nurse, and Dr. Wong? Those were the only persons present. Okay. All right, so you have this conversation with Dr. Wong and the public health nurse. What does Dr. Wong tell you, to the extent you remember? I know you're not going to have verbatim exact words, but just your best recollection. Dr. Wong explained that Mrs. Bruno had brought to the hospital and had been diagnosed <clears throat> with a skull fracture which had required surgery to drain blood from his brain. And at that point, he was being sedated and additional tests were being ordered to to have a full understanding of his current medical condition. Did she, do you remember what additional tests? I believe she had ordered uh, additional blood work and there may have been, I believe he had already had a CAT scan initially when he first arrived at the hospital and I don't recall the exact other tests. Okay. 
Do you know whether or not a, um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, I'm not good with the medical terms. Do you know whether or not an ophthalmological exam had been done? I don't believe it had occurred at that point in time. I believe she was <laughs> waiting for a specialist um, to be able to come and evaluate him. Okay, so that so at that point in time, you mean that at the time you were speaking with her there on the floor, what had been done was her physical examination and the c CT scan, is that right? Yes, and I believe he had already undergone surgery at that point. And what was they were still waiting on was the blood work and the ophthalmological exam? Correct. Did Ms. or Dr. Wong tell you anything else during that conversation? <clears throat> she told me that based upon his age and based upon the injury, that it would have been some type of blunt force would have been required to cause the injury, and that she believed that it was <clears throat> non-accidental because he couldn't have caused the injury to himself and that there had been no explanation provided for what would have caused the injury. Now you've worked with Dr. Wong before, right? Yes. How many times, how many times have you consulted with her in your entire career? I don't know the exact amount of time. I, I know you don't know exact. I'm always looking just for estimates, your best estimates. What's your best estimate? How many times have you worked with Dr. Wong in the past? I don't know. I don't know what would even be an accurate estimate. I mean, it was definitely more than this one situation. Mm -hmm. More than 10 times? I honestly, I don't know. Could it be somewhere between 10 and 20 times? It could be, but I don't know. Okay. Have you ever actually been in the situation where you were called to testify in a case in juvenile dependency court where Dr. Wong was also a witness in the same case? She might have been. Do you have a recollection? I recall testifying on cases in juvenile court. Mm -hmm. Do you recall I, testifying on cases in juvenile court where Dr. Wong was also in some way involved, at least in your investigation? I don't recall her ever being present in the courtroom and testifying at the same time that I was present. She may, she may have been another party testifying on the same case, I don't know. Right, that's not really my question though. My question is, have you ever testified in a case in juvenile dependency court where as part of your investigation, you interacted with Dr. Wong? I don't recall if it was, if I ever testified on a case that she was also called to testify on. All right, that's not my question. Okay. As part as part of your job when you get a assigned a referral like this one, this is a good example. It's your job to go out to the hospital, right? That's a yes or no question. That's that's part of your job, right? If the child's at a hospital, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. And talk to the doctors there, right? Yes. Okay, that's part of your investigatory duties, yes? Yes, if the child's at the hospital. Right. And we can just use this case as an example so you're not confused about whether they're at the hospital or not. This kid was at the hospital. We're all clear on that. So also as part of your duties, 
is if there is a child abuse pediatrician that's seen the child, you're supposed to talk to that person too, right? Yes. Okay. And you did that in this case, yes? Yes, I spoke to Dr. Wong. Yeah, and, and you're aware she touts herself as a board certified child abuse pediatrician, correct? That's correct. Okay. And she's been at Chalk interacting with not just you, but many emergency response workers for years, right? Since at least 2007. I don't know the exact year that she started practicing it. But you know the exact year, you know the exact year you started as an emergency response worker, right? Yes. That's 2007. Yes. Yes. And you've been interacting with Dr. Wong at least since 2007, occasionally, at least, right? I don't recall the first occasion that I started interacting with her, but I have interacted with her on more than one occasion during that time frame, yes. Okay, and you've had cases that actually went to court, to trial, whether you testified or not. You had cases that you investigated that went to court, juvenile dependency court, went to trial, where Dr. Wong was one of the people that you interacted with as part of your investigation, correct? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Okay, what part do you not understand? I don't understand the part about cases going to trial. Have you ever been, have you ever, have you ever had a case where you were involved as the ER worker and the child was taken away from the parents and actually went through a court process, had a trial? Has that ever happened to you? In juvenile court? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you know what I mean when I'm talking about a case going to trial, right? In juvenile court. Yes, yes. that's what I said, okay. juvenile court. Okay, so you, in your case work with the agency, you've had cases where you investigated as an ER worker, the child was removed from its home, and then the case went to trial in the juvenile court, yes? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, and in those cases, have you ever had, besides this case, have you ever had any cases where Dr. Wong was one of the people that you talked to as part of your investigation? Yes. Okay, okay, see how easy that was? We got there. Now, how many times, can you ask me, how many times did you have cases where you interacted with Dr. Wong that went to trial? Got into court. I don't know an exact number. Yeah, I know you don't know an exact number. Give me an estimate. More than 10? Between 10 and 20? That's probably fair. I don't know an exact number. Sure. Would it be fair to estimate that that's happened somewhere between 10 and 20 times? Are you able to give an estimate? If not, then let him know. I don't know if it was between 10 and 20 times. Okay. Is it so numerous that you can't count? I don't keep records of how many cases that I've had, <coughs> which specifically included Dr. Wong. Okay. Have you ever learned in any of your interactions with Dr. Wong or concerning Dr. Wong that she has been sued on multiple occasions? for making inaccurate allegations of child abuse? Objection that lacks foundation, calls for speculation. My question was, have you ever heard it? So it doesn't call for speculation. Either she heard it or she didn't. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question yeah, again? Yeah, I can. Can I have it reread, please? Objections. He's asking if you ever heard that. I've heard it. I'm sorry? I've heard that. In what context? <clears throat> I 
I've heard that she had made a statement and then later on changed the statement. I appreciate that, but that doesn't really answer my question. My question was, actually, let's just do this. If I can reread, should be two questions back, her answer, and then my follow-up question. And listen carefully, it's the follow-up question that I'm looking for an answer to. <coughs> Questions back. Question. Have you ever learned in any of your interactions with Dr. Wong or concerning Dr. Wong if she has been sued, if she has been sued on multiple occasions for making, that she has been sued on multiple occasions for making inaccurate allegations of child abuse? Answer, I've heard that. I've heard it. Question, in what context? Answer, I've heard that she had made a statement and then later on changed the statement. Question, I appreciate that, but that doesn't really answer my question. What's the context in which you heard that Dr. Wong had been sued on multiple occasions for making inaccurate allegations of child abuse? Objection calls for speculation. I've heard that Dr. Wong has been sued. Wait, wait, listen to the question. Are you asking who told her that, where she heard the it? The context. What do you mean by context? Was she sitting in a bar with somebody? Was she at a restaurant? Were you at home watching TV? What was the context in which you heard that Dr. Wong had been sued on multiple occasions for making inaccurate allegations of child abuse? Same objection. I don't recall the specific context, mm -hmm. but it, okay. But what did you hear? I've heard that Dr. Wong and Chalk Hospital have been sued before in regards to cases with the with the social service agency. And you've heard that. Dr. Wong specifically has been sued for making inaccurate allegations of child abuse. Is that right? Objection calls for speculation. No, I don't know that they were inaccurate allegations. Mm -hmm. I've heard that on at least one occasion she had made a statement or given an opinion and then later on had changed the opinion. How long ago did you hear that? I don't recall the exact date. Okay, would it have been before July 2015? I don't recall if it was before or after.